Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are at our virtual world. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Ron Dagdag, and today I will be talking about AI to the edge with Azure Percept. Uh, if you're not familiar with Azure Percept, that's good. You're at the right place. I will be talking about what that is. Uh, if you're not familiar with AI and Edge, and we'll talk more related to that. But before we do, uh, hold uh, on. Before one okay. second, can you just make sure that the subtitles go on? Because we're going to get some feedback on that. Um, just try it again, see if the subtitles, they were, they were working. Yeah, they were they working, were. but it did not show up for some reason. Let's try it again. Let me try to share Sorry. my screen. Okay, and make sure it's, is it going through? Okay. Yes, perfect. There oh, you go. Great, thank you. All right, <laughs> All right. continue. Okay, let's go back to that slide. And I, I will be talking about a little bit about monkeys too. So that's going to be part of my presentation. But before we start, I, I don't know if you've heard about these uh, phrase, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Most likely everyone is familiar with that uh, phrase. And I came from Asia and for us, the, the way I understand see no evil, hear no evil and speak no evil is more, you know, be proper of what your thoughts are going to be, right? So uh, as much as possible, you, you want to be proper on how you would look at something or see something right and in here uh, and and avoid uh, evil doings that's that's pretty much what it's trying you know the, the way i kind of understand growing up but i came here from the west it's kind of like doing this right so uh meaning if you see something just don't talk about it you know if you hear something just just be quiet about it and speak don't don't talk too much about it if, if you see something improper so it's kind of like the other way around so I got interested on this and I'm like, let, let's go back and kind of understand where uh, this came from and this expression came from the see no evil, hear no evil and speak no evil. It came from this uh, temple in Nikko, Japan. It's the, it's it's uh, it's an artwork, right? It's this Toshogu temple that has this. Uh, it's a play of words because, uh, you know, it, um, it, it's a play of words. That's why it became monkeys at the end of the day, right? Uh, and that's that's how it it was able to to kind of give you that that look and what what it's it's telling you right there. Um, and so that got me interested in what with this and how. And today I will be talking about how I can relate monkeys to. AI and this edge stuff. Okay, so there is a purpose why I'm showing you this, just to get your uh, your attention. Okay, <laughs> so our our agenda today: what is AI, and what is AI enabled Internet of Things? Then I will be talking about Azure Percept, and then uh, capabilities of what Azure Percept is, and uh, I will do a little bit of demos. So when we start about, you know, learning about Internet of Things, typically, you know, you know you search on the Internet, like I want to learn more about this Internet of Things stuff. And typically you, they would tell you, hey, do you want to use a Raspberry Pi or do you want to use an Arduino and, and those things just to get you started? You know, the left one would have an operating system. The Arduino one does not have an operating system. It has a uh, you know, a microcontroller. So there's, there's different use case, and of course, uh, on how you would use this. And then if you want to learn about computer vision and then machine learning, notice there's a lot more stuff to learn about it. You know, the data science world where you have the development tools, the data ingestion tools. And if you want to learn more about computer vision, they start talking about this open CV, all these different deep learning frameworks and 
it's just a lot of stuff. And of course, understanding is that there's a lot more questions in, you know, just to just to learn about these things. There's just to to get your wrap head wrap around on these topic. It's it's a lot. And so let's go back to uh, to basics. Let's kind of define what is Internet of Things. Internet of Things is uh, connecting the Internet to physical world via sensors. It was uh, coined by Kevin Ashton back in 1999. It's any device that interacts with the physical world around it. Most likely you're familiar with it because you have all your smart thermostat and start smart home appliances and started to uh, to pretty much be integrated with the appliances or with the two, with the stuff you have at home, your TV, you know, you have your uh, all these different electronics that you have uh, at your kitchen. And then of course we go back to you know, typically each one of these Internet of Things device most likely will have a program and programming looks something like this, right? Where you have an input and then you specify an algorithm. That we as a developer, we generate algorithms. We create like in this case, we're creating a calculator. And so we, you know, we figure out how to add, subtract based from that input and we spit out the answers. On the machine learning world, it's kind of like it's flipped. Notice that answers are going to be on the left side. Algorithm is going to be on the right side. Our goal is to teach the machine to generate an algorithm for us. So we have to give it a bunch of examples. You got to give it, you know, based from your input, this is your expected answer. This is your input because this, this is your expected answer and then train the machine and to create an algorithm based from those examples. Of course, lots and lots of examples to 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 make sure the algorithm is correct. So in as a machine learning prim primer programming on the right side, you have your algorithm input and answers. Machine learning on the left side, you have answers, input and algorithm. OK. So in machine learning world, we call input and answers training data. You need a lot of training data. And in order to use to to create a machine learning uh, to 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 teach the machine, uh, you use a training framework to spit out a model for you. And then that model, you would replace it with your algorithm you know, to identify the rules. And then in, in machine learning world, we call that inferencing. And you need an inferencing runtime in order to give the the answers for you. Today, what we're going to do is I'm going to focus on this side of the house, right? Azure Percept is on this side of the house, right? Being able to use your model at the edge, right? The AI model that was generated at the edge, meaning in, in one of those internet of things device. So and it does specifically the inferencing side. OK. Internet of Things, there are two main uh, goals that you're trying to do, right? It's either you're trying to remotely monitor that device, meaning gather the data, do some processing in it and then get the device status, or you're trying to control that device, meaning you're trying to send commands to that device to do to to instruct it. So think about the light bulb when you when you switch from your phone the to from the app on your phone to to switch on and off on, uh, of of an Internet of Things connected light bulb, right? It would send that message, would send that command to turn on and off, and then set device properties. Um, however, it connects to its network, those kind of things. So those are the two main reasons why, you know, the main goals of Internet of Things. Of course, you know, Internet of Things, you start thinking about with the cloud, data center, or, you know, where we, we deploy to the cloud, or sometimes we deploy it to edge nodes, or sometimes we call it fog. So you think about 5G and all those cell towers, those cell towers having a compute node 
or an edge node and be able to deploy to one of those because that is closer to the user. That is not part of the cloud. It's part of maybe the AT&T network or the Verizon network. Uh, and then the edge devices would be how your devices are connected to the internet. It could be in a gate, you know, connected to your local ISP, uh, or you it is connected to you know the, like uh, you know c connected to the internet through the cell towers or the telecom industry. So and of course now when we're thinking about deployment, the cloud most likely you're talking about thousands of servers that you're deploying to nodes. Most likely you might be deploying millions of devices. And of course, edge device, there's a lot more. So I'm talking about just the scale of how you would deploy to these devices and what makes it easy. So those are some of the things. And so that's what the Azure Dev Percept Dev Kit uh, is uh, solving, right? Uh, Azure Percept Dev Kit, it's available now for I think about $350 that it does include uh, these two items right here, which is the compute side and then the camera, but it's specifically an Internet of Things device. So what what there's a Azure Percept Trust module, and then there's Azure Percept Vision, and then Azure Percept Audio Kit that you can you can integrate. The Azure Percept Trust modules it is an NXP device. Uh, which is an ARM processor it has four gigabytes, so it's a compute that you can you can deploy out there. Uh, it has a connection to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, and then the Azure Percept Vision has this uh, Intel Movidius Myriad for its visual processing unit. Uh, it has its uh, it has a good camera. It's I think it's about uh, it, I forgot which eight megapixel resolution camera about 30 frames per second and how it can capture it. Uh, and it's a Sony camera, so it's a good camera that is already integrated here. And Azure Percept Audio, it is, uh, you know, it, it has a, it, it is a, it has a microphone array, uh, so linear array so that you can easily connect uh, and and uh, do and make it a smart home or you know like one of those smart assistant okay so azure percept studio on the other hand is on the azure portal to where it manages these azure percept device it has delight delightful onboarding meaning the way how you would connect this to you know this device it walks through step by step instructions how you would connect it to azure since it's an it's this iot device only can connect to azure right it cannot connect to any other um, cloud provider uh, it has step by step instructions and how you would connect it to the cloud how easily you can you can uh, register it to azure percept studio it has integrated experience, and I'll walk you through as, as part of the demo. It has this no code flow, meaning uh, you can create an application without uh, and, and update this device without writing code specifically for, for Percept. There's also advanced workflow if you want to change and create a new model or specific model for that device, you can do that. Uh, it's specifically geared towards being able to easily prototype, and then if you really need to scale, you can easily deploy this and how you would uh, uh, deploy it to to uh, to your company. Okay, now that you know, let's start talking about monkeys. That's one of the things that I'm interested in. But since we're talking about monkeys, I would look like a monkey right now because <laughs> I want to make things fun, right? Uh, so for the just this, this few slides that I have, notice that all these cameras right here, uh, they'll have, you, usually when you have a camera, it's always watching and it's always recording, which is like what we really don't want, right? As much as possible. And that's kind of uh, having a way to what we really want is to be able to 
process that video locally and limits its recording where you you know you don't uh, typically record everything but record the important things and that's when we start talking about intelligent video analytics and so that's what azure percept vision does right it's it's out of the box ai recognition no code required i did kind of talk about this ai acceleration that is inclu included where it has the vision vision processing unit it has sensors uh, i did talk about this eight megapixel cameras with the field of view of 120 degrees and rgb camera support and then of course you have these um that is always listening uh you have these devices that when you start recording it's just always listening and it's always recording and that's not what we really want what we really want is to have at least some sound processing at the edge and make it where it limits whenever it starts recording it limits the only things that are important and make it context aware and context aware and that's when we start talking about these smart assistant right smart assistants would you know kind of like your your google home and the, of course the madam a devices in case you have that uh, those uh amazon devices smart assistant it's because of the keyword it's all constantly just listening for the keyword before it would start recording so that's what makes it uh makes it good so azure percept audio allows you to be cre to create an azure um an, a, a smart assistant with this as a specifically uh, custom smart assistant where you have these 180 degree far field you know that can can listen to you know the a keyword and of course it has a, a way you can you can have an audio out so the the one thing i didn't like about this kit is it did, didn't come with speakers it only comes with the microphone but it has the audio out that you can just you know connect it to a speaker and then you're good to go okay and then of course you have these devices that are always broadcasting and it's always tracking and what we really want is to have some data processing at the edge where it would limit the information that being sent from that device and have a way to be able to uh, to be intelligent enough to know which one it should send because that can get expensive too. getting uh, setting sending just this just these telemetry data and of course that's when we start talking about these intelligent edge so an azure percept dev kit is an intelligent edge device where it has a processor uh, it has an NXP device, have an IMX8 uh, ARM processor. It has uh, some security, it has security called TPM, and then Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection. All right. Okay, so here are the few reasons why you want to do AI on the edge. One is because it's low latency. You want to make sure that uh, you, what you're sending to the cloud is, you know, instead of sending every frames, right? Imagine if your video frames, so this Azure Percept sends every video to Azure, that can get expensive. So if you really want low latency, like how fast it can process these video frames, it makes sense to run it on the, the, the dev kit itself. Another one is scalability. If you want it to scale into, uh, if you if you want to be able to um, save some money instead of sending you know uploading and you have ingestion ingestion cost to Azure instead of doing that you do your processing at the edge device uh, the edge device so it's this uh, Azure Percept kit and then the only upload the results that you you actually need. And of course, flexibility. The good thing about this is even I lost internet connection, it still can can process those video frames and, or the sound uh, data. OK. Let's talk a little bit about these transfer learning 
what is transfer learning? Because in order to deploy uh, and customize that model from this for this Azure Percept Dev Kit to Azure Percept, we need to be able to create a little bit of transfer learning. So tra training from scratch looks something like this, right? If you want to be able to create a model that would uh, categorize, like this why this one is classifies these images that you're displaying, uh, if it's a car, truck, or bicycle, uh, you would, what you would do is you would collect a bunch of pictures and you would use this convolutional neural network that would learn the features of the, you know, these examples, and then based from that, create a model that can categorize uh, these types. Transfer learning allows you to be able to use something that's already pre-trained uh, convolutional neural network. That is like in this case, it was trained on cats and dogs, but you're providing different data sets like in this case, cars, truck, and bicycle examples, and then be able to create a new model against that. So it, it, with a little bit of fine tuning, like in this case, it would now reuse what was previously trained for cats and dogs and be able to use it for car and truck classification. So that's pretty much the whole gist of what transfer learning does. And in order to do that for us, uh, Azure has this uh, custom vision service. If you go to customvision.ai, the whole point on this is where you can upload some images and tag them, right? Like in this case, I uploaded some pictures and I specify, hey, all these pictures are fruits, okay? And then I upload these four files and then I click train and what it's doing is, it's training a new, it's using transfer learning to train a new model based from our examples. Uh, and then we can export them and download it or directly send it to our uh, Percept Kit. And I will demo how we would connect Azure Custom Vision Service, or uh, which is part of Cognitive Services, and connect it to Azure Percept. And that makes it really easy for us to change the model. Um, and of course, in more advanced features, if you want to do uh, other than what the out of the box experience of working with Azure Percept, you can actually even add edge modules. And if I have some time today, I can demo a little bit of what the different IT edge modules that is available out there that you can deploy to uh, Percept, Azure Percept. Okay, let's continue with the demo. Let's start with that. And let me prep this quick, make sure I can. Okay, so Azure Percept Dev Studio. Um, I, cr I created an instance once you uh, was able to onboard your Azure Percept Dev Kit. It would create an instance of Azure Percept Studio. And then once you have Azure Percept Studio, you can register that devices there. So like in this case, uh, it's showing that I have an Azure uh, Percept device that I already registered as it, it, it walked you through uh, the steps. Uh, the cool thing about the, the uh, kudos to the Azure Percept team because they created the step by step, really step by step instructions on how you would you would easily onboard these devices, even though you don't have a lot of the Internet of Things uh, knowledge, but it uses a lot of the tools that we have in in Azure. To, to do this, so now that I have this device. Uh, I can go in. And notice how it gives me an information about what this device that, that we have. Uh, it was man it's manufactured by Asus. This is the model. It tells you what software version it has. It's an ARM processor. So that means if you're doing custom programming on this one, you have to make sure, if, let's say if you have a C-sharp application, make sure it compiles to, to ARM processor rather than uh, you know, an AMD device. And of course, you would see where you can actually 
uh, open the device to IoT Hub. So one of the requirements when doing onboarding uh, Azure Percept is it has to connect to an IoT Hub. So it would also, uh, if you, the, the onboarding steps, it would give you the uh, details on how you would connect it to IoT Hub. And if, it, the, if you don't have an instance of it, it would create a new one. Uh, this one is the live telemetry. I will uh, I will talk later about that. Uh, let's go to this vision kit, and I'm today I'm going to focus more on the vision side of it uh, rather than uh, the speech side, because it's easier to demo for us the the vision side. Um, so what we're going to do right now is I'm going to click on this button, which is view your device stream. And what it does, it actually sends a message to Azure Percept Dev Kit, uh, Azure Percept uh, device right here, which is, uh, I have it near me. And what it's doing is, it since I, I have it in the same network as, as what my computer is, I can view the frames of what the camera is seeing and so I can display. I want to make sure it's live. See my hand right there. So it's this is a live video stream of what the camera is looking at right now. And what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that let me go back here. You can capture images for a project. You can view device stream. You can depl uh, deploy custom vision project. You can deploy a sample model. See if I can make this screen a little bit bigger. Okay. Let me go back there. So what we're going to do out of the box, they have these sample vision model that I can just deploy on this box. Like in this case, what we want to do is I want to do these uh, V, uh, I guess we'll do the general object detection. So let's start there and then deploy it to this device. Mm -hmm. So that right there allows me to be able to do deployment. Notice how it's loading a model and it's tries, it was, as it tries to load that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these statue right here. Let's see if it will detect it. Hopefully it would. See if I can get that going for you. There. No, I don't know if you've noticed. Say, well, it's kind of hard, hard having trouble detecting that a little bit, but it was able to detect it as a teddy bear. That is not a teddy bear. That's totally a gorilla or monkey. Uh, so, but it brought out of the box, it was able to detect, hey, the, there's an item right in front of me. And so it's running that AI at the edge, meaning the model was deployed to this device and it's running its uh, detection, right? And and it would be able to detect these item. Cool. So let, let me move that out of the way. So what we're gonna do now is I want to capture images for this project. In this case, I actually created a project for a custom vision, and you can actually create a new one based from here. Um, but since I already have one, let me show you a little bit if you don't have uh, what this custom vision does, right? Custom vision AI project. Let me see if I can open that for you. Okay, so some of the some of the projects here, you can create a new project. It would ask you, hey, what do you want to create? There's a free version how you would create this. Uh, let me go back to this. Yeah, so this one right here, if you, you can create a new project, uh, let's say test, we'll do that. You specify what resource there's uh, which so you can create a new resource. Uh, and then it will ask you what type are you doing a classification or object detection? Uh, and then you specify what 
class it is, like in this case, multiple, you, will you have multiple tags per image or just one single tag per image? Like in this case, what I did was uh, I did object detection. Okay, I guess it didn't. So I did object detection and then you can select, okay, which one of these? To start with, I would start with the general A1 and then just create that project. So like in this case, I already created this here, no evil, speak no evil, right? I have these images as an example, okay? So since I have those, what I do is I just add images, upload some images, and then tag them. Uh, but you can actually connect it through Azure Percept Studio. So I would say, Azure, uh, this this is the project. I want to uh, upload some images, and then I will take a picture of my. Uh, let's see if where's my preview now. I think I may have. There's my web stream. Notice I have that image right there, and let's see if it captured it. So notice how if I say untagged. It will have these images. So that, so what just happened? What we did was to click this button right here, take photo, and it will send that image that was captured from the web stream, send it to custom vision, and then I have something that I can tag. So like in this case, I want to tag this one because that's uh, speak, right? So that means this, yeah, that is a speak. So, so now I, I think I double tagged it, but that should be fine. That gives me more data set to 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 test it with. And there's I think there's another one. So I think I captured twice. I can say, okay, that's speak. Okay. And then I can close this model. And so what we can do, since I have those images, I have them tagged, all these different images that I have. And I click train. I can do quick training or advanced training. So you can you, know, you can make it up to like 96 hours that it would find a good model for you. Uh, but we'll do the quick training. And of course, you know this is a cooking show. And as any cooking show, I have one that's pre-baked for you. And so this is what's going to happen uh, after the iteration training. And this one kind of gives you what is the precision, the recall, and how many images that it can see. Sometimes it gives you warning if you don't have a lot of images. So there's minimum number of images that you need to upload. And like in this case, I, you know, based from each tag, uh, you can, you can, um, and then now, now that you have these, you can, you can do some quick test and upload some pictures, you can do that manually, or we can go back to Azure Percept. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna deploy these custom vision project, right? And so it would tell me right here, what project are you working on? Hey, I wanna use this C here, speak no evil. And then I would use which iteration uh, like in this case, I'm going to use the last one on the list because the other one, iteration 11, is still cooking. So we'll use iteration 10, which is already pre-baked, and we'll click deploy. And what this one does, since we know, it knows that percept device 01 needs to be uh, deployed with this model, and it would contact it. And notice how it's saying here, load model. And that's what it's doing right now. It's trying to load the model. Let me try to refresh this screen because sometimes it does not give me the full screen. But now, right now, it's loading that model. Cool. So now, notice how it's detecting. Hey, that's speak. See if I can try. The other one I have. I have my other devices here. I have my. Here. OK. And then I have. Yeah, see. 
And I think if I put them, place them together, it's detecting both. Of course, if my demo failed, I already have it covered. Notice how the the guy has already the face palm. Face palm. <laughs> so it would detect all three of them. Let's see. There you go. I guess it's because it's being covered. Notice how the percentage of how good it was able to, so it's, it's more than 50 and all that. Okay. Let's try to move it a little bit out of the way. As I don't know if you noticed, there, there's some beeping that is happening. Um, I will tell you more a little bit if, if we have time and what, what is going on and why is it beeping. Uh, but let's go back to custom vision. And yeah, so we have that model and let's go back to Azure Percept. And let's make sure that how do we get data from this device, right? So typically when it sends data to the cloud, it would send you the result of from that web stream video. It would send you the result in the JSON payload that actually connects to the IoT hub. Like in this case, um, it would show on this live telemetry if it whatever it's sending to the cloud. I what I did on this Azure Percept, what I uh, my goal was because what's happening out right out of the box is every time you have any data that um, you're you, that that it any inferencing that result for each frame, it sends data to the cloud. Uh, it sends data that you can it goes to IoT Hub and then you can use IoT Hub to export that data. Let's say if you want to store it in a database or you want to uh, have it into a, a streaming, right? A streaming pipeline. Now you can export it from IoT Hub into Cosmos, or if you want to export it to a uh, kind of like a uh, event stream or event hub, you can do that. And I'm not going to cover that part of the, the course today, because uh, now, that, now that it's in the cloud, you can actually export that from IoT Hub. Uh, so what I'm going to do is let's focus on what on IoT Hub is. And how it kind of, you know. What's happening in the background a little bit more details of what the Azure Percept is doing. So. This device right here, this edge uh, device, it runs on Linux. It actually runs on the Microsoft's flavor of Linux. It's called CBL Mariner, which is open source. And what is going on on this device is it actually connects to, it works in an IO, IoT Edge device. So IoT Edge actually uh, is, runs different containers. It's actually IoT Edge runs on top of containers or Docker images, right? Docker containers. And then each one of these, like what is it? You know, this is like the configuration on this IoT Hub, uh, IoT Edge device, or this Azure Percept device. Each one of these is a container. Think about all the different containers that are running uh, to be able to 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 connect. Like in this case, there's a web stream module. The web stream module allows you to be able to, uh, you know, be able to read uh, the frames like this one is the web stream module it op the, the that container opens up port 3000 and be able to view the uh, what's what's on the video frames and then of course you have these uh, edge hub and edge agent this is responsible of connecting to the cloud uh, this one right here is the there's the speech client module that allows you to be able to read uh, data the, uh, to be able to to connect to the uh, speech module or the sound module. The Azure Eye module is the one that uh, loads your model and processes the model. So anything that that's the inferencing side, uh, that's where it's doing. The image capturing module. So when I click the take photo, 
that's the one responsible to capture the frame and send it to uh, the cloud and then send it to whichever is the uh, what you call these the Azure uh, custom vision. So it, that is the one responsible for uploading it to Azure custom vision. And then in this case, I added a few modules that because I'm kind of playing with it, uh, which is the Arduino module. That is one of the custom module that I created. And what it does is, you know, it I, I have an Arduino that I connected to this Azure Percept so I can communicate with an Arduino device. And I wrote a tutorial how you would you would do this. And then of course this one is uh, Azure Stream Analytics. So you can actually get uh, Azure Stream Analytics running on this uh, Azure Percept device it, so that it would filter, it can filter the data that you're receiving and then only send to the cloud the important things. And so let me sh let me kind of show you or demo what this one looks like if we have time. We have about eight minutes to be able to do this. Um, I will um, let let me talk a little bit more about these uh, modules. This this how would you create or add the new module? I may not have time to to do the percept. Uh, the streaming analytics at the edge, but I will talk a little bit about these different marketplace modules. So this is how you would uh, you would add a different module. So if you want an Azure Stream Analytics module that would filter it, or that marketplace module, or IoT Edge module, this is a custom module. This one allows you to let's say if I want to deploy. Uh, all you know some of these like if I want to deploy node red or if I want to deploy uh, like in this case an event grid you can deploy it at the edge and and redis you can deploy it to all these different ones but the glue in how these modules communicate with each other is this routes right here so you have modules which is think about modules as containers or Docker containers running on on that device and routes would be the traffic from one module to the other, right? Like in this case, right? Uh, Azure I module to Azure I module to Arduino module. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, so or Azure I module to uh, Azure Stream Analytics Edge module. So what it's doing here is any message that I'm getting from this Azure I module, so meaning that's the one that does the inferencing. I'm sending it up to these the, the as an input to this Azure Stream Analytics module. So the same way as the, the Arduino module. So that's one way you can send. And then anything that data that's coming out of this Azure Stream Analytics Edge modules. I'm sending it up to IoT Hub, sending it to the clouds. So this way I can filter. So my point here is typically you can, you know, you 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 do Azure I module to IoT Hub. You can do that, but you can you can create a filter so that you can reduce the number of messages that get sent to the cloud. So what does that message look like? Uh, so in this case, what I want to do is I want to be able to just send. I'm going to create this module, Azure I module to IoT Hub. So the name doesn't really uh, makes a lot of difference. But what I'm going to do is I am going to send any output that we're getting from Azure I module. I'm going to send it into the cloud to upstream. That's what it's doing here. So once we do that, I'm going to say review and create. And then, and of course, it has this long payload. This is what's going to be deployed and sent to that device. And it kind of knows all the things that are to change as, a, as its configuration. So I click that. And what it's doing right now is sending a message to this Percept device. 
and it would update itself um, uh, to connect. And then let's go back in here. And then let's see if I can view the live telemetry now. OK. Let me see if I can point this one. Notice these are the data that's actually sending. Anytime you have this web stream, let me see if I can load the web stream properly because it's not the updated. So now you can see here, and this is the data that you're receiving in the cloud. So it says here, this is the results of the neural network. This is the bounding box of what the uh, the data that it, you know, where the, the, where it was located. And then what is the label? Like in this case, it's here and the confidence level and then the timestamp. And it's processing it per frame. So every frame that it, you know, it would, it would uh, upload and instead of uploading the video, it would send you just the results of that, and then you can start processing it. And so that's what I was doing too, right? So notice how it's like just sending constantly. So every few seconds, any frame that it's receiving, it uploads it to the cloud. So instead of uploading a video or frame or an image, it's up just giving you this telemetry data of what it was receiving. So let me, what I'm going to do now is I am going to stop that because I wanted to just set that module, change that route, and remove that route. So this one is Azure iModule, Azure iModule to IoT Hub. I'm going to turn that off, or I can just delete it, right? This one, and then recreate. So what I did on the Azure Stream Analytics module, this one right here, let me see if I can do a little bit of, you know, what that looks like, Azure Stream Analytics jobs, I believe that's, that's what I have. So I have these Azure Stream Analytics job, and the, the key point that I wanted to show you guys here is that how does it filter the data? So there is a, you know, at the end of the day, what it's supposed to do is to tries to filter that data that you're receiving from that edge device and send it and just filter it with, with these. So the query looks something like this. Uh, see if I can give you a little bit space. So what this one does is it reads the, the data set and then it receives, it looks, it receives those data, it filters them. Once it filters them, it only publishes, and what it's doing here is only publishes the results, and it tries to count how many has it seen in the last 15 seconds. So it only uploads it every 15 seconds, or only filters it every 15 seconds, and it counts how many, uh, let's say, see or hear, of images that we received uh, and send that to the cloud. So, so that's what it's doing now, because I think I have it, that deployed. And let me see if I can filter this. And I believe that's, this is the end of that, my presentation. So now let's wait for a few seconds, see if it would start sending that data. New live telemetry. Oh, I have to wait 15 seconds. So that's that's the the you know, there you go. Yeah, I have a instead of each frame, now I was able to filter the data that I'm receiving to every 15 seconds uploaded. Cool. All right, I'm ready to go back to the presentation. Okay. Just to summarize, what just happened? <laughs> right? So what I did was to demo a way that you can control an Internet of Things device, which is an AI-enabled Internet of Things device, uh, where it, which is an Azure Percept. We were able to deploy a module, or an, uh, we were able to deploy a, uh, a custom vision uh, model that we created. We deployed it to that device, and then we used it 
We also did a few demo of how to filter the data that you're receiving on that device and and before sending it to the cloud. So just to recap, what is an AI enabled Internet of Things? AI, at the end day, what you want is to learn from data. IoT, you want to monitor and control devices. What we want is to process AI workloads at the ed edge. What is Azure Percept? It's a way to prototype and deploy AI on the edge without knowing a lot of the details about Internet of Things. What is the capabilities of Azure Percept? You can use it to have a vision project, an audio project, and of course, if you want to, there is a trust module that you can do some edge processing on it too. Cool. So if you are interested in learning more about me, my name is Ron Dagdag. I'm a lead software engineer and AI edge spe specialist at Spacey. I'm a 50 year Microsoft MVP awardee. The best place to contact me is through Twitter at Ron Dagdag or LinkedIn. Uh, or you can go to this link, link tree uh, slash Ron Dagdag. It has all the links to my uh, information. I appreciate you geeking out with me about monkeys and about Azure Percept. And I appreciate your time. And if there are any questions out there, let me know. Uh, this would be the best time. Thanks for your time.